Next comedian coming here this evening is an amazing comic, a beast bartender, and he'll leave the stage smelling more like cigarettes than he did before he got on it. Put your hands together for Michael Musler. I've been doing comedy for a while. This is the first place I ever got paid to do comedy. It's sad to see it go. But a trope about Dr. Grins is it was hard to get booked as a local, you know? Hard to get booked as a local. And after watching all these people, I get it. <laughs> Trying to do my job, not get fired, not gonna book Adam Deggy. <laughs> I know he has cancer, but he's also a racist who kicks dogs. Okay, let's, um... <laughs> seen it happen, he's racist to his dog, which I think is even worse. <laughs> Stupid joke, why did I start with that? Let's dig the hole deeper. I'm sick of poor people. <laughs> I'm sick of it, dude. I'm obviously poor. I shop at the Family Dollar. It's not a good thing to do. I don't like at the family dollar that they have the people food right next to the cat food. <laughs> Sick of it though. Just because I'm poor doesn't mean everybody I know has to be poor. Oh, okay. All my friends, their cars suck. They're all loud. Their, their apartments suck. There's chip bags all over my yard, dude. Where are these chip bags coming from? Some of you aren't laughing. Are you the one throwing the chip bags, sir? It ain't fucking me, dude. I don't like flaming hot Cheetos. I'm sick of it. You ever tried to plan something out with other poor people? Shut it down. Don't even start. Just gonna depress yourself. I sent out a group chat to my friends. I was like, hey, do you guys wanna go to Cedar Point this summer? And everyone's like, no, I gotta work every day for the rest of my life. I found one thing that does make me feel better about being a poor. <laughs> the one thing that makes me feel better about it is I'm a bartender and I get a lot of cash tips and instead of putting my cash tips in the bank like a responsible human being, I put them on a table at my house that I call money table. <laughs> Ooh, do I love money table. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and look at it tonight, dude. Fucking love money table. Feels so good looking at money table. How much money is on money table? Thousand dollars. I don't know, maybe. Probably more realistically, 150. But like, still, it, it looks good in ones, I'll tell you that much. It's a pile. It's a pile. <laughs> you can see money table from my window, which seems irresponsible. <laughs> I don't come to my house and try to break in, dude. I got a 22. I'll fucking... It won't send you to the hospital, but it'll hurt, dude. It'll hurt. If I get you in the eye, I... you'll regret it. I'm jealous of Jehovah's Witnesses. I am. I'm never going to believe in anything that strongly. Never, dude. I'm never going to read a book and be like, I should tell the neighbors about this. <laughs> we got any pro wrestling fans in the house? That doesn't sound real. That <laughs> sounds like you guys are making fun of me. Don't be mean to me on my last set of Dark Grants. <laughs> No, but here's the thing, some of you wrestling fans might know this, is that every wrestling fan has their favorite, like, dream match. You know, it's like fantasy booking. And I was talking to my buddy about it. I was, he was like, my, my dream match is Ric Flair in the 80s versus The Rock in the 90s. I was like, hell yeah, dude, that'd be a good match. That's a great match. But I'll tell you guys, that is not my dream match. My dream match has been the same since I was 12 years old. It's a Hulk Hogan versus my stupid-ass stepdad. <laughs> Can't wait till Hulkamania runs wild on Steve. <laughs> you never see.
anti-conservative artwork. <laughs> you know? There's a message in artwork. It's, it's going to be liberal, usually. Like, like, I, like if you see a, a, a painting downtown, a mural, it's going to be like a bunch of multicolored fists in the air, and it says, equality. Just once I want to see a Republican one. I want to see like a painting of a strip mall, and it says, economy. <laughs> I listen to this radio station in town. It's called 97.3 The Beat. Woo! They play like a lot of old school hip hop and R&B. I like the music, but I'll be honest with you guys, my favorite part about this radio station is the commercials. <laughs> commercials are a, a little different on this radio station. There's one for a place called the Smell Good Cafe. And it starts with like an instrumental R&B thing. And then this guy comes in with this deep Isaac Hayes voice. He's like, come on down to the Smell Good Cafe. We've got oils, colognes, perfumes, shea butter. So he just keeps listing stuff. But then in between that, there's a lady who pipes up and goes, mm! that smell good. My favorite commercial. When it comes on, I tell people to shut up, I turn it up. <laughs> but here's the thing is every commercial is like that on this radio station. It's like regular corporate businesses have like hip hop versions of their commercials, which is very dorky. Like I wouldn't be surprised if I got in my car and it was like a DJ scratch and it was like oh oh O'Reilly. <laughs> All right, you guys, my name is Michael Busler. Thank you, and good night.